Hello and good morning. Once again, welcome to my home. Today it's the 8th of March and we are celebrating the International Women's Day. For me and for you, it should be a very important day because we are celebrating and fighting still for the rights for women the equality between man and woman. And I find it very important to be talking about this because we need to have equality between the sexes. There must be obvious that men and women equally shall be able to go to school, shall have the opportunity of choosing the person they will fall in love with and to marry. It shall be obvious that you shall have the same equality according to politics, religion, money, position, work and most of all schooling. There are thousands and millions of young girls not having the opportunity to go to school and there are lots and lots and lots of girls around in the world not having the opportunity to choose the man they want to marry. Somebody has chosen for them and it's either because of family, religion, and status. And I find it such a sad thing that we shall not have equality between people. I went down to the school, my school, where I work uh, the other night and asked some of uh, the girl students there, what they thought about equality. Because Norway is of course considered to be one of the most equal countries in the world regarding to the sexes. But I'm not sure if that is quite the right thing to think. Let's hear about what the girls are thinking. Ladies, young girls, my students at uh, Viken Folkehøyskole, the 8th of March. I'm wondering, what are you thinking about uh, the women's uh, equality and the rights for women now in 2021? The sexes are like equal on paper and all that and we don't, like it's more than just fighting the fights, it's also fighting to like legitimize the fight. But there are still problems that we need to solve. Because, I mean... Like, like what, for instance? For instance, equal pay. Equal in pay. England. But there's still a difference. And there shouldn't be. Because women don't work any less. We don't put any less effort into what we do than men. And the fact that women are paid consistently lower, like the, um, um the Yenosnet, <laughs> average, the, the average, uh, for every, the, the average is unlike for every, in Norway at least, for every hundred kroner that men, um, earn, a woman, a woman earns only 87 kroner, and that's like, that, that can't be a coincidence, that's, that, that has to be, uh, in some way because um, this this society kind of um, values women's work less or women themselves as workers and it's just like in the in the restaurant world too you see women definitely overrepresented as cooks but men overrepresented as chefs, chefs. <laughs> that's right mm. when women cook it's like yeah they just they just cook they're just making food of course they're making food but when men make food it's like they're making Food? Gastronomy. They're yes. making fine dining. 
<laughs> in um, 1990, the 8th of March, I had the honour and the pleasure of playing Nora in A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. It was a premiere on the 8th of March and I was extremely proud of this great part in this great play. But the thing was that I had a male director, I had a male costume designer, I had of course the company leader who was a man and he was also playing uh, Helmer, uh, my husband in a doll's house. And when I was discussing problems in the play or how I should act or this and that, I remember very clearly that these men around me at the point, at the, at the time, said, leave it to us, dear. Just leave it to us. And I was thinking, but I'm doing the greatest part a, a female actor can have. The most important play about women's liberation. And you are treating me like a doll. Is it because you think I'm a doll? Or is it because you, you don't know anything better? Having played that part, we had 50 performances in 1990. And we also went to Bergen, to the big theatre in Bergen, and played it there. And um, during that time, those months where we played, I really started to think about women's liberation, the rights for women, the equality between man and woman. Because I was not grown up in thinking about it. My mother was the chef in the house. She was not only the chef at the kitchen, she was the director in our home. We had to ask mother. She was the big mom in the family. And of course I thought that that was how it was in all families. It was just when I started to high school that I really discovered that my mother was <laughs> something quite different from everybody else. And not only my mother, because when I went, my mother was half English and half Norwegian, so in the summer we used to go to England to my grandmother, and my grandmother was just the same. But I realised that things are not like that everywhere. I find it interesting to see, when I was at the Wikipedia this morning, I noticed that New Zealand was the first country in the world that got vote for women, and that was in 1893. So congratulations, New Zealand. Very proud of having some cousins over there. Finland was number two in 1906, and Norway came in in 1913. In 2013, we had the Jubilee for women's rights here in Norway, and also the Jubilee for the birth of Camilla Collett. Camilla Collett was the first feminist in Norway, born in 1813. She became a widow at the age of 39, but her husband had told her all the time that she should write. And when she stood there without any, any money, she started writing. And she um, wrote the book, Daughters of the County Governor in 1854 and that is 
the first political statement in a book in Norway, a novel in Norway. I have had the opportunity and the pleasure of playing Camilla Kolop. I started off in 2013 and I've been playing her ever since. Not every day because I do other things as well, but from time to time I have this performance about Camilla Collett. And tonight, on the 8th of March, I will play Camilla Collett. And I'm extremely proud of that. And I find it, of course, extremely important. Well, I want you to listen to the girls at the school again and congratulate you on the International Women's Day. 8th of March and hope that you will bring your thoughts to somebody who needs it. Maybe do something so that the world can be better. More difficult for us to work our way up. Mm, definitely. And I, I sometimes get the feeling that when a man goes into uh, the, a profession that is dominated by women. It's like a noble thing for them to do. A noble yeah. thing? Yeah, or like, uh, uh, it's like, oh my god, you're, you, you work in caretaking? <laughs> what a man! Like, mm. he does that, but when a woman pursues, like, uh, leadership uh, jobs and stuff, she's like, she's like, a, she's like bossy, she's a bitch, she's taking on too much, or she's not, like, she's not qualified or something. Men get, I mean, they are kind of welcome to work in a women's women's profession but sometimes when women try to reach the same amount of success that men sometimes do they are just in the way or they are uh, trying to accomplish something that isn't realistic because they're women or that they shouldn't because they shouldn't mm. be like they should take they they should focus on taking on other roles like there's still so much of this mentality that a wom that it's a woman's job to 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 like bring up a child yeah take care of your children and mm -hmm. stay at home do you think that is really the case i mean norway is uh, one of the most equality uh, countries in the world and it's still like that not like staying at home for life that's not that normal anymore but staying at home with the baby while it's small it's definitely considered a woman's job still when they like we have this um uh, now it's um, made law that men also have to take on some of the um maternity time at leave home. yeah mm -hmm. maternity leave or paternity leave um but it's considered like it's still considered odd because you because it's like they're taking on part of the woman's job. It's not like it's parted into two equal parts. It's like he's taking a little bit more of the woman's job, but it's still considered mm -hmm. the woman's job. And there has to be a law for it. They have to be forced into taking care of their own child. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. insane. That far, we have to tell them, no, you have to contribute mm -hmm. to your child's upbringing. <laughs> and a man work more and the woman stay at home more because she earns less money and like when a new family has a child obviously they need more money than before so it's it's advantageous for them to let the man work and the woman stay at home but that just like accentuates the problem because why does the man earn more in the first place if he like if that's the reason for her staying at home then then that's that's kind of that's also the problem like it's part of the problem yeah, uh Someone might also say like that the reason that women get paid less than the men is because they have to take maternity leave. Yeah, mm. so it's an evil circle. It's just, <laughs> it doesn't add up. It's, we have to do something about it. We have to make sure that women get paid for the work that they do.